Hello, YouTube. I recently had the pleasure of participating in a 24-hour redstone challenge hosted by Sipover. In that challenge, I decided to build a random maze generator that I've been holding in my back pocket for nearly two years. It was a concept first shared to me by a user named CBenny, who is one of the collaborators on Metamilo's Discord server. What I want to show to you now is an improved version of that random maze generator using Prim's algorithm, which was also shared to me by C. Benny. Let me give you a quick walkthrough of how that algorithm works to generate a maze. So let's pretend this is our maze grid, and each of these blocks is a cell within that maze. The blue block being the entrance for the maze, the green block being the exit, and the purple being the center point for the maze generation. These are predetermined locations within the maze. You can select any one of the cells for the starting, ending, or maze generation, but I found that these work best in a square maze format. So how the algorithm works, if purple is our generating point, what we do is we first activate that cell. And I'm going to mark it with a black carpet to, to show that it's been activated. Now that this cell's activated, it's going to look for neighboring cells to then activate and start pathing to. And this is a, a random direction selected from any of these activated cells. So if we say we're going to move up, and that's the random location selected, that cell is now activated and is locked out from neighboring cells. This cell is now going to look for another neighboring cell to spread to. So let's say we move to our left. This cell is now locked out and cannot be accessed from neighboring cells. However, as this pathing continues this way, this cell is still active and looking for additional paths to activate from. So the starting location is going to now path in this direction and activate and lock out. This cell is going to path in this direction and activate and lock out. This cell again will activate in this direction and lock out here. Now, this cell might seek to activate this one, but because we're locked out, it's actually not going to path there. And we can actually account for that in the redstone circuitry to make sure that that doesn't happen. So every time a cell gets activated, it's going to continue to look for paths to move to and continue to spread across the entirety of the maze. So this cell can activate in this direction here. It cannot activate in that direction, so it's going to take another. And it'll do that until the whole maze is populated. Now, there's a few things we need to figure out first to make this work. First is deciding a random direction, and second is how to lock out each cell. So let's take a look at how we can create a random direction using redstone. Here is our redstone randomizer circuit. What this does is that this dispenser is going to dispense a shulker box with just any item in it so we can read some form of signal. The signal has nothing to do with the random direction. It's only so that it can create a signal to break itself upon being activated. You'll see we have our four input directions, so it can be activated from any neighboring cell. And if we were to activate it, there, you'll see that it dispensed the box, broke it, took the signal into this hopper here, or the item fell into this hopper, and put the signal in the, we'll say, down direction in this way. If we activate it again, now it's going in the right direction. But this can take in a, a signal from, from any side and output to any random direction. The breaking of the box changes the shulker to entity form, and the second, the second hit, because you were getting two pulses on that piston, it's hard to see with my shaders on, but let's do that again. We'll actually force it to go into any of those uh, X and Z directions. So you'll see that the random distribution here can hit every direction. There we go. So we've just got all four directions there, completely random, regardless of where the input comes from. So that's the randomization for each cell. Let's take a look at how we're going to lock out each cell. All right, here's our lockout. Now, what this is going to do, let's make sure that we reset first, is we're going to take a signal in from any direction, 
and we're going to trigger the the center so this would actually work as the trigger for the dispenser in the randomizer and it's going to lock out all of the other inputs except for the main input because that's where we're actually going to create a clock to continue looking for random directions to spread so if we came in from the down direction let's activate here so what you saw there was it activate this piston it put power through the note block using the note block as the update on the observer here for the piston so that we can do it in um, two ticks and then this pushes down all of the other sticky pistons on any of the other inputs so now if i take input from any one of these locations we're not going to trigger the center so we cannot be activated um, from any other neighboring cell now this can continue to trigger it because we're going to clock it so that it can send signal outwards in any direction we just can't bring signal in so you'll see that that works in any of these directions so now these three are locked out and this one still accepts signal no signal no signal no signal now let's see what these look like together for a complete cell here we go this is a complete cell it's five by five it includes our randomizer our lockout some reset lines and the triggers for the doors on whether to open them in whatever direction gets activated so let me um let me place an observer here there we go so you'll see that the randomizer selected the down direction so now it's going to clock to the adjacent cell just below it we cannot take in signal from any other direction any longer so there you'll see nothing activated this one still works however so because this cell is the one that decided to input to it it's going to continue to clock it until it finds more directions to output to technically that first double backing isn't going to do anything because this path is already open but as this continues to clock we've now activated the cell to the right we've activated the cell to the left any of these inputs aren't going to take in so you cannot take in a direction from any of these other neighboring cells this will still clock and maybe we'll get that back output as well maybe not no still no there so now this is actually sending signal to all three adjacent cells provided that they haven't been locked out already and this is the basis for the entire maze I've added a floor here to illustrate the five by five rooms but you'll notice that the doors themselves aren't open well the doors get opened only if the activated cell is truly activated and not locked out so this signal is pushing into the adjacent room because it's kind of mirrored to the next cell this would actually push up the other piston on the other side triggering this rail and opening the door if it's locked out well then that pistons down it's not going to push the note block up over here and these rails won't get activated so it'll only open the doors if the cell it's trying to activate has not been locked out which is kind of what you would see here is if there was a door here it's not part of this cell it would be part of the next cell below this signal coming in would have activated it and opened that door for access to this room and as it continues to generate and hit uh, unactivated cells these doors would then open up let's go take a look at a pre-generated 9 by 9 maze all right here's our 9 by 9 you'll see that I've created some paths to show how this is actually already generated I will run through the generation afterwards but let's let's just see how this looks so I would have activated this from the the center cell and you'll see that it passed in this direction here it passed out and it passed out it did not path up which means that by the time it tried to if it ever did let's assume it did try to pass into this room it had already created a path over up and over in here you'll notice that there are a few closed loops within this maze this is not a perfect prims algorithm because 
each of these cells are, are activating all at the same time, we may end up in a situation where this cell became active, started activating this cell, and then started activating this cell. This cell activated this cell at the same time this one was activating it, so you end up getting two entries into one room. Um, it seemed to happen a couple times in this maze, so we've got it happened here once, twice, three, four, and five here. So we've got five closed loops within this maze. That seems to be a bit excessive from what I've tested, but this still makes for a very interesting maze design um, that could be pretty challenging maybe for, for people to run through, uh, especially if you did a larger maze. But let's take a look at how these reset lines work and how the generation would work as well too. I didn't put lights through all the through all the whole thing, so um, it might be hard to see the actual working going on. But this is going to be our reset line here. That's actually already built into the slice. So let's uh, just figure that, and you'll hear all the doors close. And then we got all of our doors closed. What we will do is that's already been pushed back up. So let's go and activate from the center, which will be this cell here and I'm just going to it's super dark in here let's turn shaders off this is just a, an easy quick way to activate there you go so you'll see it activated that cell which has activated that cell and you can see how quickly this thing is already spreading I apologize for the noise with the note blocks it was just the easiest way to get things activated but you can see some doors opening up here now. And I'm going to bet that that's probably already complete. Can get a bit laggy once everything's working, but let's go ahead and shut this off. So our reset line is here. And I say reset line, but it's, it's really just to stop the clocks from generating additional paths on and off to turn those off. And then we are completely reset. So we should have a new configuration in this maze. So we're open here. Let's see if we can get to the end. Ooh, this one opened up a path all the way through. Oh, but I got locked out here. Let's see if we can find our spot. I feel like I'm going in circles now. So I've already lost my sense of direction. Oh, this doesn't look too hard. And I made it. So this is what the maze generation looks like. Let me do a quick update on the pathing here to show you actually what the new generation looks like. OK, so we got a few closed loops here. And we got one big straight line through the maze. But you know that's the nature of it being somewhat random. Um, but in this area, yeah, we got quite a few closed loops here. So this isn't the greatest generation, but it is truly random. It accesses every room within the maze, and I probably got a little bit lucky trying to travel through that thing. The cool thing about each of these cells is that they don't have to be arranged in a square pattern or even a rectangular pattern. You can build this in, in whatever shape or form that you want to. And as you might have seen in the thumbnail for the video, you really can generate it in any shape that you want. So in this maze, I had the generation start at the the back of the heart here, or at the bottom of the heart. I have an entrance at the top left, and I have the exit at the top right. We have about the same amount of closed loops in this maze. One, two, three, four, five that I can see. Six if you count the outside here. But you also end up with some interesting branching, too. So you've got a couple long dead ends here, another long dead end there. This actually makes for a very interesting maze as well, too. But imagine that you could you know, make whatever size maze that you want in any shape and, and generate this entirely through redstone and you know, not have to work with, with command blocks. Again, thanks to C. Benny for the design concepts. Thanks to Sipover for having me participate in your Redstone Challenge. And a big thank you to all my subscribers for getting me to 5,000 subs um, just a couple days before uploading this video. Um, coming out shortly, we're going to have um, 
a little bit of an event using this maze and some of the folks that I've collaborated with over the last two years. And hopefully it'll be something fun and interesting for everyone to enjoy. But stay tuned. There's more to come. Thanks again, YouTube, and have a great day.